Welcome everyone to this episode of the Mortgages by Gretchen show, where I talk to real people in the field of real estate and business who are not only experts, but they're generous and willing to share their time and knowledge and their wisdom with us here today. The goal of the show is for you to gain some information and tips to help you reach your goals in business and in owning real estate, and to take some of the guesswork out of what to do or whom to call to guide you in the process. And today I'm very happy to have Steven Sforza with me. And Stephen is an associate lawyer with Wojcik Polsonelli Lawyers and Mediators. Uh, I've been working with Stephen's firm for my entire mortgage career of 18 years, and I'm thrilled to have Stephen with us here. Oh, so I'm yeah. going to turn it over to Stephen, who can introduce himself and tell us. Yeah, very happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Gretchen. Um, yeah, you know, uh, it's definitely likewise, and we love working with mortgage agents, like, you know, yourself you know we're all in the same industry so it's great to have you know to be here and you know have you also working with us so yeah so i uh, just uh myself um so i'm yes i'm a lawyer here i practice mainly in corporate and commercial law as well as uh both residential and um commercial real estate right so um you know it's a pretty broad area um but i tend to specialize in those areas and um i've been at this firm now for about almost two years and then before that i was at a, another uh durham region law firm for about three and a half to four years so okay and always in the same capacity that you're in now correct yes okay awesome so many of our listeners are entrepreneurs and they benefit from uh, larger mortgages. Um, their actual income is higher than what they're showing uh, on their tax return, of course, because they're taking their tax write-offs. And from your experience with that type of uh, business owner, what tips can you offer them to help them optimize their success, whether in their business or in their real estate investing? Right. I would say preparation is probably key, right? You know, really being as as proactive as you possibly can. Um, you know, ensure that you're keeping, you know, uh, your records up to date. You know, your, um, you know, not only your financials but also your um, like corporate records, right? So minute books, right? You know, are huge you know i ask for them all the time <laughs> so and you know uh, most times they're not up to date you know it's not a bad thing you know but uh, it does take some time and some costs right to bring them up to date um and also you know just having like a credit or like creditor proofing um means about your business right so you know for asset protection right you know don't have all your eggs you know in one basket as the saying goes uh try to you know if you're operating your um business uh you know through a corporation right um try to maybe you know like have your operating company you know as a separate corporation since that's the one that's going to be in the you know public eye and you expose right to probably the uh, highest um, likelihood of liability, uh, but you know maybe spin off you know like just some of those assets to like you know like a, a holding right company or other means um, just to you know avoid any kind of potential claims right from creditors. Um, you know that's 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 another you know kind of bigger um point and, and then where also, does that come into yeah. play with um just a quick question um sure. so there's your role in that and then there's also an accountant's role Correct. So do they talk to the accountant first and they come to you and set it up the way the accountant suggests or talk exactly. to you first or, yeah. or both most times you know i always say go speak you know to your accountants first because most of the you know time um it's about how do how do I guess develop the uh, most efficient tax you know 
right corporate structure and that's the best handled you know by any you know type of you know, like tax and corporate accountants not by you know, like a corporate lawyer right so um yeah i would say you know definitely go right see them first and then afterwards you know, we can you know be involved in kind of developing you know forming the you know the um corporation you know amending any articles right to you know be in you know be in accordance with the you know, the accountants kind of um fine there their suggestion oh, plan of action right yeah that's exactly yeah yeah and then i would just say you know um the last thing about that one would just be to ensure you know that you know all your business agreements are also you know in place and updated uh you know it i would say also enforceable right um you know if they're not being drafted you know by a lawyer to ensure that they're at least going to be reviewed by one right um you know so that's you know um that's things like uh um shareholder you know agreements partnership agreements um again contractor you know agreements and um you know all you know yeah and just all, all agreements well, right um yeah i would just you know say you expect to spend some money you know on that to save you know yourself from some major headaches and you know more expenses down the road so okay one area i get asked a lot is um jv partnerships so i've got client right yeah. now two friends that are going to buy together if they're going to buy a legal two unit property, one of them's going to live in it, the other one's not. Um, right. They're doing it in personal names. Um, now, I said you, and they want to do, because he's contributing the majority of the down payment, they want him to have 90% ownership and her 10 for, to start. So the joint tenancy. But mm -hmm. later, when she's made mortgage payments for five years they won't or at some point they want to change it and my thought was i don't think you can do that up front the lawyer can't set up a changing ownership now but you could have a separate agreement that says that will happen and then it will get registered at a certain point and how everything will be handled if one of you wants to sell and so would that be something you could help someone draft or how do they so, yeah, we, yeah we draft you know these sorts of uh, joint venture you know uh, agreements um you know trust agreements shareholder agreements you know all these sorts of yeah, i guess avenues of how to hold title you know of a property together right um i just say like you know even those parties that i guess won't have a legal title ownership you know in the right property would benefit the most right um from these sorts of uh, agreements because you know like it does kind of uh set out their rights you know and they're all you know and their obligations and then it does give them an interest you know in the you know like at least the profits right of the property right okay um, yeah that's good that's good to have you i want to be sending more people your way for that. Yeah, sure, sure thing. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, that's the smart thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um when you're when you're doing the closing of residential commercial commercial mortgages for investors, um, mm -hmm. I guess there's kind of in my mind like three groups. There's the investor buying a property that's probably less than four units. Most likely it's it's on the residential side, well would be if it's in a personal name. Then you have those who are buying multifamily, um, and in most cases, those would be in a holding company. Um, and then there's commercial real estate, could be mixed use, could be industrial, whatever. So um, the process is for those different markets, and I know that's a lot of, but even if, even if you pick one, one or three, kind of any tips to help the process go smoother. And I know, I know commercial too is its own ball of wax, but. <laughs> Correct, yeah. I would just say um, get started on the you know on the financing right as early as you you know can I mean it's that's going to be yeah I mean you definitely you know want to know that you are you have right the funds to close on the deal and there won't be any issues 
uh, with that. Um, do you know? Do do all the types right of do diligence right that you uh, need to do? Um, you know, for obviously, you know, for multi-unit residential, that's probably you know reviewing leases, right? It's you know reviewing the rent roll. Um, uh, what else? You know, uh, ensuring that the zoning and the building, right? You know, is in you know, like they're in compliance with the zoning bylaws, right? Um, there's, you know, no work orders, you know, or open permits, you know, outstanding, right? Um, those things really should be done, you know, ideally before the agreement goes, you know, firm, right? That's, that's um, you know, kind of the ideal case. Um, you know, get in touch with your lawyer, you know, as soon as, right, you can as well. Um, and, you know, make the agreements, right, like, also conditional, right, on your lawyer reviewing it. That's always, you know, a safe bet, right? Um, you know, because there are a lot of issues that uh, really can be, a, you know, uh, more or less minimized, like, or, a, you know, or really just, you know, avoided, right, from the outset, if we you know, as lawyers had, you know, like just had the opportunity to really review it before it went firm, right? That's, that's you know, kind of the, yeah, biggest yeah. case. And I know, are you finding in this market, I know what, not, not in the com commercials, its own thing, but other, other prop, a lot of deals are firm. They, because yeah. people think, I, can't go, I, yeah. I can't go in with a conditioner, I'm not going to get the property. I get it, yeah. Um, which, you know, I always say, okay, well, then you need to prep ahead of time before you make that offer so that as a mortgage agent, I've got everything I need so that I can tell you your risks, which hopefully are minimal, yeah. and then you do it with your firm offer. Now, are people, are people going in firm, like, even with commercial or no? I haven't seen that really. No. I mean, there's just like, too much, you know, too much due diligence. Moving, you know, parts like, you know, the, uh, yeah, why, I mean, yeah, liability wise, it's way more, right? You know, it's, it's just like higher risk, right? There's too many due diligence items, you know, that you need to really, you know, uh, review, you know, again, assess, right? So not so much, you know, with commercial, but. Yeah, I mean, certainly residential, you know, uh, whether it be one or, you know, like 10 units. I mean, it's, I'm still seeing, you know, once in a while, like deals go firm with, you know, either like very few conditions, you know, like that were waived really early on um, or, um, you know, just no, you know, like no conditions at all. And then that's just not great. So. <laughs> That's yeah. Just, uh, ripe, you know, for problems later on, usually. Yeah. Do you find with uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic at this point, because I know it's gone through many stages, how is the process? What What is the process right now? Like, are you are you doing virtual meetings and in person, or uh, what's that whole process like at this point? Um, as of June eighth, twenty twenty one. Yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, it's been a learning curve, you know, I guess for all of us, including clients and everyone. Um, yes, you know, we're doing, you know, all our, or at least like the vast majority of our uh, client meetings, right, you know, like over video, right, you know, video conference, you know, um, whether it be Zoom or Skype or, you know, right, whatever it is, um, you know, it, there's obviously challenges with doing it uh, that way as well you know I mean it's you know you sort of lose that personal touch maybe a little bit um, you know uh, certainly you know some clients are are uh, just not as comfortable right you know with uh, using this right um, you know uh, same thing with like uh, like DocuSign or you know certain like right um, signing programs, you know, where you sign, right, like, right, electronically, um, you know, just some people just don't like it, right? you know, just not used to it, it you know, it's, it's still really new, right, uh, novel, right, but yeah, 
that's you know how we've you know um, really been operating uh, lately. So you, you can basically like watch somebody sign via Zoom. Is that kind of they kind of yeah yeah you know we get their ID like you know we look yeah <laughs> yeah you know yeah you know we review right you know their ID you know, as you know we have to do and you know yeah you know we uh, walk them through right you know like, you know all their documents obviously and then we watch them you know sign and then after um, you know, we you know do all their witnessing and all that right that we have to do and that's about it but uh, you know it's still really uh, I would say I guess the main thing that COVID has done is just delayed everything <laughs> you know we get mortgage you know instructions in very late now you know sometimes you know the, like, you know, the day before or you know I, like I've seen like you know the day of right closing uh, and that just you know that really you know puts a lot of stress you know on our office you know on our you know clerks and staff right so if yeah. you know, we can try you know to you know like I guess expedite that you know right process that you know yeah would be the best but uh, you know I get it you know people are now working you know from home right you know more often things just more time and that's it. So. In my experience, um, not meeting the closing date of a purchase mm. could happen rarely. And when it happened, of course, everybody was going crazy and upset and how are we going to fix this? And we need the keys before five o'clock and all of these things. My impression now in my own business, and, and I'm curious about your business, um, there's a higher percentage not closing on the initial closing date. Um, of mm -hmm. course, I try to be proactive, but if I can start to see that coming of saying, can we talk to the sellers? Can we talk to their lawyer? Can we talk to their realtor? Um, I had a, a lawyer tell me a couple of days ago that as many as 20% of their closings are not closing on time. This was in, they're in New Brunswick, actually. This was a duplex uh investment property in New Brunswick. Are you finding that high of a number as well? 20% maybe, or what's your feel on that? 20% maybe uh, might be a bit high. Um, I would say maybe closer to 10%, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, regardless, it's definitely a higher number, you know, than the you know, over, I guess, uh, used to seeing, right? Um, but we are seeing more problems that are leading up to right closing and you know, we usually you know like can resolve most right before closing but there's just you know that higher prevalence of you know issues just before closing right so and that you know just has to do with financing issues or you know last minute issues you know like uh, with the condition of the property um uh you know Tenants, you know, problems, you know, not being able to, or you know, not being willing to vacate. <laughs> that's, you know, that's been like a, a huge issue, right? You know, for these, um, like rental properties, right? You know, where tenants just, even if you know they sign, right? The, you know, uh, you know, like the vacating, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> notices there. Um, they're just not willing, right? To leave. And, you know, uh, at that point, what, you know, what kind of recourse, right, like does a seller or landlord, you know, kind of have, uh, it's pretty limited, you know, I would say, I mean, you know, I would, you know, definitely speak more, you know, to like the paralegals that kind of deal with the residential landlord, you know, kind of tenant matters more, right, than we do, but, um, you know, cash for keys, you know, that seems to be kind of the uh, best, you know, easiest solution. Um, but, you know, again, maybe not the most, you know, ideal or, or um, certainly not the most fair, right? But um, that's, you know, kind of what, you know, we're, that's the issues that, you know, we're really seeing most of right now. Yeah. Um, I have one other question about back to kind of the hold code situation, because I have a lot of Sometimes the, the path is that someone buys their first rental, maybe their second, maybe even the third, they go up to four, maybe five. They're sort of um, at that point going, oh, I think I might continue this and maybe have many more properties. Um, sometimes earlier on than that, they do decide to buy in a holding company, but 
Mm. Um, not always. So when someone's making that switch to the hold co, how is the, like, what is the process? How would it be a little bit different than if they weren't from your point of view? Yeah, so um, it depends. So I guess if, uh, if they are already, if they own property, you know, like say in their own name, you know, and they want to roll, you know, that property over into their corporation, right? Um, they can do that, you know, it's, it's, you know, it can be done, you know, on a tax deferred basis, right? You know, there's um, uh, section 85 one of the income tax tax, right? You know, lets you, right, roll over property, um, you know, to your corporation, right, that you also own shares of, right? Um, so you can save, you know, on the capital gains, right, tax, but you would still be paying, you know, things like land transfer taxes, which, you know, again, like, you know, could be pretty substantial, um, you know, and then if, yes, yeah, so I would say, you know, I, ideally, if you know you want to own, you know, this certain property um, in your corporation, right, um, like have that corporation, right? Like set up when you go to actually close and then, you know, take title in that corporation. And would you say the same thing as before? Like if you're making that decision, so maybe you're buying your second and you're already thinking, I think I, would, I should maybe consider the whole co go to the account and then go to yourself as lawyer. Yeah, and just always, make sure yeah, the, in a row. Yeah, the accountant, you know, will definitely be able to better, you know, assess your your own, you know, personal like financial right um, situation, and they'll be able to, I guess, determine whether or not it makes the most sense. Like, I guess, from a tax perspective, mainly, which you know, again, like, is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, reason you know to, you know, why um, corporations, you know, really are around right you know for the you know tax savings right tax benefits um so yeah you know them first and then us yeah. okay and they kind of cover the tax benefits and you cover the liability, liability. correct that's it. okay yeah. perfect now i got a clear understanding of that all right cool um do you have any other tips um based that maybe we, anything we haven't covered that you think might be really uh important for the audience to know um i would just say you know be uh, be patient and be kind, right? I mean, you know, we're still in really unprecedented times, right? Um, things are still changing. Everyone's, you know, kind of a little bit still maybe like in a panic, right? Like, you know, very concerned, right? Um, you know, if there's an issue, you know, with your, right, file uh, nine times out of 10, we can deal with it. You know, uh, you know, we can handle it. You know, that's why, you know, you go to, you know, hire these sorts of, right, professionals. Um, you know, the worst thing that you can do is panic <laughs> and also try to do things you know, on your own. Um, you know, just don't do that. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, you know, just hire the right people, the right team members and get it done the right way, right? Um, you know, also, you know, just, really be healthy right you know like continue with you know you're just your uh, normal <laughs> workout you know routine you know like you know good healthy diet right and that's the way you can really still be productive and you know in your own business right you know if you're not going to be healthy then what do you have right so um you know just keep on rolling <laughs> keep you know things are you know getting so they're, I guess, looking, right, at getting better, you know, uh, very soon. So that's it. <laughs> that's, those are great points. So hearing patience, kindness, physical health, mental health, those are so key to have a, a good life in general. And that's, those are um, very good reminders. So I appreciate that. And it's uh, for me to take the heart as well for when we day-to-day -day living yes yeah i should you know just say that you know i'm obviously you know i have no medical degree but <laughs> those are just general you know advice you know for everyone out there 
which, you know, I think everyone, you know, right, like can really uh, agree with anyways, so. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. Well, I really appreciate your advice, your help, your time. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will reach out to you that have some questions as well that um, or need your services. And maybe you can say, what's the best way for people to reach you? Sure. Yeah. So they can reach me either by phone or you know by email. I'm probably better with email right now, right? So it's just my first name. So Stephen at DurhamLawyer.ca. Oh, perfect. That's easy. Right. And, and your your information will also be in my social media posts as well. So. Right. Also on our website. On your website, DurhamLawyer.ca, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. You too. Bye-bye. You're welcome.